So we just praise God for just watching over us and protecting us. And we want to welcome each of you to this, the Crawfordville Baptist Church here in Conyers, Georgia, where we're coming together to celebrate our 141st church anniversary. Hallelujah. We, were, we worship him and praise the Lord for his faithfulness. Through those years, he has been faithful to us as he has carried us 141 years. We look forward as we coming together, celebrating. We welcome in our Facebook Live audience that we can come together, be encouraged in the Word of God, to be reminded how we are taken care of, how God has just so faithfully blessed us. As the Psalm of Moses says in Psalm 90, he's been our dwelling place through all generations. And we just magnify him and praise the Lord for just blessing us to be here so we welcome each of you to be a part of our worship experience as we come together to be able to share in the Word of God and to be able to begin our celebration season. We invite each of you that maybe by Zoom or even on next Sunday, if you're able to be in the area, we are here at 2360 Lake Rockaway Road, and we'll be coming together celebrating with a marvelous worship experience on next Sunday morning. So we look forward and welcome and invite each of you to be a part of that you can come together as we culminate and celebrate our 141st church anniversary. So we just praise God for his faithfulness and for his goodness and how he has blessed us. So let's prepare ourselves and put us, if you will, in the church anniversary uh, remembrance, if you will. Let's receive this video that will kind of just take us back and let us reflect back, and then we'll come back and share, be encouraged in the word of God. So let's receive this video, and then after that, we'll come back with the word of the Lord. Amen. Good morning. This is Eloise Shepherd. As you all view the recorded history of the church, I'd like to acknowledge that your reading is a written result of former pastors, devoted church members, concerned family, Sister Dorothy Lester Smith, and myself. I'm honored to have been convicted, along with the others, to recognize the importance of keeping the history of Crawfordville Baptist Church. I am very thankful for the sacrifices made on our behalf by those in the past. I'm also thankful for what we've been able to accomplish in this present day. And I look forward to witnessing what God will continue to do for us in the future. Past, adapted from the poem, Mother to Son, by Langston Hughes. Well, Crawfordville, I tell you, life bus ain't been no crystal stack. It had tacks in it, and splinters, and boards torn up, and places with no carpet on the floor. Bad! But all the time, Crawfordville has been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So Crawfordville, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on the steps, get kind of hard. Don't you fall now, but we're still going, honey. And life for us ain't been no crystal stair. But with the help of God Almighty and His Son, Jesus Christ, we pressed on. Present. Poems adapted from Keep Going by Kate Summers. When failures came, you kept going. When you felt like giving up, you kept going. When people mocked you, you kept going. When challenges you face, you kept going. When mistakes were made, you learned, but kept going. With God's help, Crawfordville, you never give up.
Future, adapted from strength by Kevin Mitchell. Youth, be amazed by your strength. It was given to you before your name was spoken. Your strength is adored by many, many who knew of your arrival. God forbid waited patiently, knowing you are their merit. They were humble and mighty people who paved your way. You stand on their backs forever looking high, never turning back, regaining their strength. God forbid will walk with you, so hold your head high. For many will aim to follow as long as God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, lives. According to church history, Crawfordville Baptist Church was organized in 1881 by the late Reverend L. M. Maddox. In 1908, the church resided on Irvin Bridge Road in Conyers, Georgia. And in 1926, it was rebuilt on the same land. It remained there until 1956, when it was built on the present land, which is now known as the Johnny B. Lester Fellowship Hall. In 1999, a construction loan was obtained and construction began on our present sanctuary. Then in 2020, the terms of the mortgage were completed and the church was paid in full. For we know that it was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight. To read the complete history of CBC, please visit our website at www.crawfordvillebcconyers.org. There you will find a homage to our past, a glimpse at our present, and exciting things to look forward to in our future. Hallelujah. We praise him for his faithfulness and for how he has blessed us. Amen. We just magnify him for his faithfulness and blessing us to be here to celebrate this 141st church anniversary. We definitely invite you to be a part of us again on next Sunday as we culminate. I just want to, as we begin to look into coming to this season, I just reminded of an old song that actually says, Down through the years, the Lord's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, the Lord's been good to me. Oh, down through the years. The law's been good to me. Uh, you know the law really been good to me. Say that with me if you will. Down through the years, the law's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, the Lord's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, oh, the Lord's been good to me. You know the Lord really been Give him praise for he is absolutely worthy to be praised. He has absolutely been faithful to us throughout these years, and we just praise him for his greatness and for his goodness. And I thought even on this occasion we could remember one of those old hymns that how the Lord what has brought us over and brought us through. And again, we just want to celebrate and come together on next Sunday morning to be able to continue in our celebration. But we begin this celebration this day by inviting you to share in God's word. I want to invite your attention to the gospel as recorded by St. John, the gospel as recorded by St. John. And I want us to be reminded that what has kept us, and how the Lord has brought us through this uh, 141 years, 
this is, I believe, one of the things that the Lord has done to really demonstrate his faithfulness and his goodness for us and how good he really is. So I'm reading from John chapter 10, and I'm going to read actually verses 1 through 18 of John chapter 10. If you are able, if you would rest on your feet that we might honor the Lord with the reading of his word and just praise him for his faithfulness as we look to be encouraged with the word of the Lord. John chapter 10, verses 1 through 18. I'm reading from the modern English version. You will find these or similar words in the version you have before you from John chapter 10, verse 1 through 18. Read, truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will never follow a stranger, but will run away from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus told them this parable, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. And I came that you might have life and that you may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, but he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. So the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because he is a hired hand and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known by my own. Even as the Father knows me, so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep who are not of this fold. I must also bring them, and they will hear my voice, and they, there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore, my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I receive this command from my Father. I like that ninth verse when he says, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and find pasture. For a few minutes today, let's consider on this thought for our 141st church anniversary, in the shepherd's care. In the shepherd's care. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In this particular passage here in John chapter 10, Jesus uses this title for himself where he says he is the good shepherd. It's only found in the New Testament here where he says he's the, the, the good shepherd. Jesus was intentionally, though, reaching into the Old Testament with his words. Because if you remember, uh, he said in Psalm 23, he says, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. And Jesus lets them know and reminds 
these Pharisees that he was talking to that actually I am the fulfillment of what was promised down through those years. I am the embodiment of what God was promising, promising and I am fulfilling that promise. And the thing is, I am here, if you will, that if you will, I came in the door, the, the messianic line, I walked in that door. But now it ain't just about the old laws and the old way of doing things. Now you've been entrusted to my care, and I'm just not here to lead you and others in to me, but I now want to lean, lead you out and that you might find good pasture. You want to come in and settle in your old ways, in your old way of doing things, but you've actually now been entrusted to me. I am the door. Yes, I came in the way the word says I was to come in. That's what it says in the Old Testament. But now that I'm in, I now want you to follow me that I can lead you out. And when I lead you out, you'll be able to come into pasture. And I'll lead you to success. I'll lead you to safety. I'll lead you to security when you put your faith and trust in me. Yes, the whole book of Ezekiel, or particularly once you get around the 34th uh, chapter of Ezekiel, was talking about the prophecy of these shepherds and sheep and all of this. And the prophecy regarding the shepherds referred to the ones that were there, but the ones that were leading the people of God, the ones that were looking, they were looking for another shepherd to come. What they were experiencing, where God has brought you and what God has placed you in is not where he wants to lead you. But the thing is, in order for you to be led to the next level, to go in and find the pasture, the blessings, the prosperity that he wants to bring you into. He does not want you to get wrapped up into the things you used to do, but be sensitive to the person of Jesus Christ, who is now the new door, if you will. He's not just the door where he led you in, but now he wants to let you know that he's the door that will lead you out of the things you used to do, that you can now receive the things of the future that he has prepared for you. And I got news for you. I want all that God has for me. I'm happy, yes. I'm, I'm rejoicing in the fact of what God has done in these 141 years and allowing this and blessing this. This church is paid for. It has a very rich, fulfilling history. But I'm excited that we are now in the shepherd's care, that he now has greater things in store for us. We're believing that. We're not going to get and sit back and rest on our morals. We are in the shepherd's care that he wants to take us to another level. He wants to take us higher. He wants to take us farther. He wants you, but you have to put your faith in Jesus Christ, not necessarily rest on your laurels of the thing. I know he's been faithful. I know he's been good, but God is not through with us. We're in his care. He wants us to understand that we have to focus on him. By Jesus calling himself the good shepherd, he was letting these Pharisees know and these religious leaders that were there, it's not about what you've been doing or what you are. It's what he wants to lead you into. But you got to put your focus on him. And in order for that to be done, Jesus highlighted, if you will, in this text, the spiritual blindness of these Jewish leaders, these re religious leaders, the ones that were in charge, the ones that, if you will, should have been Israel's spiritual shepherds, but Jesus had to explain to them, if you want to be self-serving and focused on yourself, you are not a shepherd, you are a thief. 
because you're all about you. But I want you to know, if I am the shepherd, it's not about just me and me. I'm letting you know that I'm willing to make a sacrifice to take you to the next level. I'm not coming in to celebrate, if you will, what God has done and by bringing me in and bringing me through that messianic line and now I'm the fulfillment of all of these Old Testament prophecies. But I'm excited about what I'm trying to lead you into. If you put your faith and trust in me. He's helping us to understand that anybody that has come before him, they've climbed the fence. They may be in the sheep pen, but they are a thief and a robber if they're focusing on just amassing things for themselves. But Jesus said, I'm the door. I'm the one that came into the sheep into this sheep pen. I've come in to your Judaism, your messianic line to help you understand it's not just about me coming in and fulfilling the prophecy, but I got promises that I want to lead you into, that I want to prepare you and direct you. But in order for you to go to the next level, you got to follow me. You got to be focused on me. You got to know anybody that's focused, if you will, on celebrating all only the things of the past and amassing things in the present. He says, if you will, that's almost like being satanic and follow because you don't want to move forward. You, God's got greater things in store. Yes, we honor him and we celebrate what he has we celebrate him for what he is doing, but we should be steadfast and unmovable following in the shepherd's care to go into what God has for us. He wants to take us to the next level. Oh, yes, yeah, good. It's marvelous for what he has done. And Jesus has to help them to understand because I have fulfilled these prophecies. Now it's not about the things of the past or even the things of the present. I want you to follow me and what I'm doing because I want to secure you a greater future. I want to secure you greater blessing. I want to be able to restore the things that you lost, but I want to be able to take you and bless you with some things that you never even imagined. But you got to put your faith and trust in me. Jesus uses these terms in the midst of this text. The big uh, theological word is anthropomorphic, which means he's assigning, if you will, human characteristics in reference to these personal items. He shares to, that if you relate to me and recognize that I am a door, yes, I'm a door, I'm the doorkeeper allowed me to come in. That's the Holy Spirit. He welcomed me in, but he wanted me to come in to fulfill the promises that I have already established in the Old Testament. But then now that you know my voice and now that you hear me, I want you to follow my voice and follow my lead as I take you to the next level. But in order for you to do that, you got to know my voice. You got to know what you first need to do. That's what verse 3 and 4 says. You got to learn to follow the shepherd. Yes, I'm the fulfillment of the promises. But I, I want you to move. I want to go to the next level. He says, watch this. The doorkeepers open the sheep, hear my voice, and he calls his own sheep by name. But he's there to lead them out. He's there to take them to the next level. When he brings out his own, he goes before them. And the sheep will follow him because they know his voice. He's helping us to understand when you get your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and you recognize and accept the fact that he is your shepherd, he is your guide. Yes, I'm the one that fulfilled those promises. I'm the one that brought you over Crawfordville. I'm the one that has blessed you these 141 years. But if you put your faith and trust in me and follow me as your shepherd, I'll take you to higher. 
deeper depths. We can do more because now you know my voice. You've seen what I can do. God's saying, I want you to learn to experience me. That's what Jesus is telling. Learn to know my voice. How to discern when we follow the shepherd, the sheep must learn to hear his voice. And when he calls us by name, he wants to lead us out into greater things, greater blessings. It's not over. Yes, he's been faithful to us down through the years, but he's saying, if you put your faith and trust in me, we can now go to the next level because now you know me. And if you follow me and experience the true shepherds, the good shepherds care, I can take you to the next level. But the thing is, when you draw near to God and you're following the shepherd, you got to learn to trust your shepherd. You can't just, if you will, watch this. Don't just stay at his, his, his side. You got to stay at his side and stay under his protection, the protection of his rod, his staff. You got to stay in his presence that you can hear his voice, that you can know his voice, that you can follow him to the next level. And that's why you can't just let him lead you. You can't even let him follow. He watches out. But yeah, you got to walk with him. You got to learn to put your faith and trust that you walk with him every step of the way. Because that's as David said that he was the Lord. He said the Lord walks through the valley of the shadow of death. Through all the difficulties that come in life, we got to put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ Focus on him, follow his voice, that we can move to the next level. Jesus was using this imagery to describe himself and emphasize the importance of his followers, that is, his sheep, that they have a personal knowledge of and relationship with their him, their shepherd. He's saying, you got to know my voice that I can lead you personally, as I can lead you as a group to help you understand as I'm reaching other people to draw them unto me, I want to be able to bring them into the flock, but I want to lead the flock of God. I want to be able to lead the church that I'm preparing to be able to take them into all that God has for us. In order for them to be able to go to the next level and be in the shepherd's care, they'd have to learn to follow the shepherd as he leads to the next level. But then another thing that he find out right there in verse 5, not only do you follow the shepherd, but it's the responsibility of the sheep, if you will, to flee from strangers. Flee from strangers, that's what he says. Yet they will never, they will never follow a stranger but will run away from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. He's saying you need to learn to flee from strangers. In other words, anybody that's not like me, anybody that's not sounding like me, anybody that's not focused on me, you got to understand you need to stay away from the things that try to distract you from following me. I got news for you, the, the strange one, the real one that tries to draw you away is that old slew foot Satan. He wants to scatter the flock. He wants to get you isolated where he can pick you off. But you got to come in and not forsake the assembling of yourselves together that you can stay strong in the flock. There's strength in the flock when you come together and hold close to one another and allow me to put you on one accord and you know my voice. I can take you to the next level, but you got to learn not only to follow the shepherd, but you got to flee those strangers. Anybody that's not about me, anybody that's not doing the work, or anybody that's trying to do work, that's not Lord glorifying, God glorifying. Satan and his followers have no well-being or no concern for the well-being of the, of the sheep. They enter the flock or they come in for their own gain. Satan's followers, he paralleled them to 
a hired hand because when times get hard and when times get rough, a true shepherd is going to hang in there with the sheep. He says he's willing to sacrifice and lay down his life for the sheep. See, Jesus is such a good shepherd with you when you're confronted with the challenges of life, when you're confronted with the circumstances of life, when times get hard, I got news for you. The Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. He's in for the long haul. He's going to stay in there with you. If you put your faith in him, he's going to see you through. He's not going to treat you like a hired hand when times are hard and rough. He says, the good shepherd will hang on in there. But you got to put your faith and trust in the person of Jesus Christ, following his voice, not getting distracted, fleeing from the strangers, anything that's not like him. That's what you put your focus on. You go through, if it's not like him, I can follow him because that's his voice, because I hear him. That's the way he's moving. That's the direction that the Spirit is leading and guiding. Anything that's trying to distract you from following Jesus Christ, if there are persons in your life that are trying to distract you, trying to discourage you, trying to make you doubt, that's just a trick of the enemy, y'all. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't want you just to forget about it. He wants you to put your faith and trust in him. Follow the shepherd. He says also, flee from those strangers and those strange things. Anybody that's not focused on him, that's about him. And he promises that when you follow the shepherd, and when you flee those strangers, when you get down into verse 9, he says, you can find salvation, security, and success. He says, when you're following him, because he's the door, he's the door, watch this, to lead you out, to lead you to the next level. And he says, when you follow him and you enter into that door, when you accept Jesus Christ, and you put your faith and trust in him. He says, watch then, you will find out that you will be saved. You'll be able to, he'll pay the price for you. He'll pay the penalty of your sin. He'll bring you into salvation. He'll bring you out of darkness into the marvelous night. But it just doesn't stop there. He says, watch this, when you're saved, you can go in and go out and find pastors. He's saying, bottom line, I'll lead you in, but that's what, I'll lead you out. When you, I don't want you to just focus on the things of the past and what I've brought you through. Yes, I led you in. I'm keeping you. You're saved. You're delivered. You're set free. But when you put your faith and trust in me, you're going to find out that there's green pasture. There's great things ahead of you. You're going to find all the things that you desire. He'll grant you the desires of your heart. When you put your faith and trust in him, you'll find salvation, security, and success. That success is that pasture that he's trying to lead you into. Well, you'll fulfill all of your desires, the things that he, but you got to know his voice, follow the shepherd, flee the strangers, and you'll find everything that you're looking for. When you put your faith and trust in him, you'll find salvation. You'll find security. You'll find success. Anything that he desires to do in your life, it's what's best for you. When you start relying on yourself, thinking you can figure it out. Yeah, I can just uh, get myself together. And if I, I'm going to figure this thing. What he's trying to help you to understand, unless you commit yourself to following his voice, all of those things are going to fall short. you got to put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he simply says, I want you to understand this one thing about me. If you're following the shepherd, you're fleeing the strangers, I can help you find salvation, security, and success. You know why? Because I'm going to show you something. 
I'm going to make a faithful sacrifice. Let me show you what kind of faithful sacrifice. Uh, when you read down through verses 11 through 18, Jesus is saying, watch this. I'm going to lay down my life for the sheep. I'm going to make this thing secure. I'm going to make you right. I'm going to let you know that I'm going to lay down. I'm going to willfully lay my life down because watch this. I'm going to have the power to take it up again. I want to demonstrate to you that as I make this faithful sacrifice, that I got the ability to lay it down, yes, because God has given me the power and the ability and the authority that I'll be able to take it up again. Therefore, if I can do that in my own life, guess what? I know I can work it out in your own. In you, when you put your faith and trust in me, if you discern my voice and follow after me, in those seven verses from uh, 11 through 18, he says, five times that, if you will, I'm going to lay down my life. He did it willingly. He did it voluntarily. He wants you to know that I am got the power to lay my life down because I got the power to push a tombstone open from the inside out. If you put your faith and trust in me, any problem that you have, any circumstance that you have, when you put yourself in the shepherd's care, in the good shepherd's care, I'm going to let you know I'm willing to make a sacrifice for you. I'm willing to, to lay down my life for you. I'll pay the penalty of your sin. I will show you and demonstrate to you that if you put your faith and trust in me, I'll die for your sin as I will on a Friday. But early that Sunday morning, I'm going to take it back up again because I got all power in my hand. I got the authority and the ability to work those things out in my life. I got the authority and the ability to work them out in your life. If you put your faith and trust in him, you'll be in the shepherd's care. He's going to work it out. He's brought us through 141 years. But he's not over with. He wants you to know if you know my voice, you've been assured that I've kept you for 141. And as long as the Lord allows, I'll keep leading you if you follow the shepherd. Flee from the strangers. You're going to find the safety. You're going to find the security. You're going to find the success if you keep your faith and trust in me. Because I've made that faithful sacrifice. I want you to know, if you put your faith and trust in him and hold to his unchanging hand, the Lord will lead you into success. He'll lead you into the prosperity. He'll lead you into safety, salvation, and success because of the sacrifice that the shepherd has made. My salvation, my safety, my success is secure. As I follow him and flee the things that distract me from him. Because I am in the shepherd. He's made the sacrifice. He's paid the price. He's brought us through but he now wants to take us to the next level. Prophet Bill, let us commit ourselves to being in the shepherd's care. You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. I hope you're saying yes, 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 yes I can, for I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you we focus afresh upon you. Thank you for the privilege of being able, you fulfilling all the promises, of the messianic promises that we would know who you are. You fulfilled every promise that God made and you embodied it in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father God, we know that as he's walked and fulfilled your promises, that now he can 
now through his power, through his resurrection power in our life, can take us and lead us into the fulfillment of the promises that you've made for us. Lord, we don't want our sufferings. We don't want our circumstances, our situations that we encounter in life to distract us from you. We want to know your voice so we can follow you. We're going to flee the things of this world, anything that's not about you. We're going to commit ourselves to follow your direction and guidance, hear your voice, learn to discern your voice, your direction. Have your way in our lives. Bless us as a church, Lord, as you brought us through these 141 years. Take us to the next level. We're going to follow you if we commit ourselves, Lord God. Yes, we celebrate you. We honor you for the things of the past. We celebrate even what you're doing in our presence because we're still yet holding on. But, Lord, we look expectantly. We anticipatorily await what you want to bring us into. And we will follow your voice. We'll flee the strangers. And we know that we're going to find that salvation. We're going to find the security. We'll find the safety. We'll find success as we follow you, because you've proven through your faithful sacrifice that you made on Calvary's cross, that you can lead us into life everlasting. Thank you, Lord, on that Sunday morning. You declared that all authority has been given to you in heaven and in earth, and you now hold the power to lead us to the next level. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and we are there. If there's anyone outside of the ark of safety, if there's anyone here, has never accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of his life, rest assured he stands ready, willing, and able to receive you right now. That you will learn to get to know him, develop a personal relationship with him, that as you follow him, he'll lead you into all that he would have for you personally and even here corporately as a church as we commit ourselves to following him. To encourage you, if you need a personal relationship with him, accept him for salvation. But if you need a church home, we are going to continue to faithfully follow our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Just as this church has for 141 years, God has never left us. He's never forsaken us. Yes, we've had our ups. We had our downs, we had our ends, but God, you have been faithful to us and you have never left us. You've been faithful to us throughout all of these generations. So we continue to believe you. Lead us and guide us to that next level. Let us be that church that we want to stand strong in you. Thank you, Lord. Any unsaved, unchurched, anyone that's unsure, if you know, want to be made sure to know that you want to feel his presence, you want the Lord to walk with you, not just lead you, not just hold you, but you want him right beside you, want to feel his presence in your life, you need to make that. Become sure of that, that you made a commitment. If you need surety of salvation, assurance to know that he's there, he loves you no matter what you've done, no matter what you did, if you made a commitment to him, Maybe you strayed away, found yourself back, but he's ready, willing, and able to receive you back. All you got to do is repent, turn yourself toward him. He'll restore you. Rededicate yourself to him. Recommit yourself to him. Anyone unsaved, unchurched, unsure, finds himself in a backslidden condition, but if you rededicate yourself right now, He's ready, willing, and able to receive you. If there's anyone here within this sanctuary, anyone that is joining us via Zoom or via Facebook Live, at any point in time you're hearing this message, harden not your heart. If you want to come into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, he's ready, willing, and able. If you need direction and guidance to do that, send us some communication at prophetbillbcconyers at gmail.com and let us know that you want to make a commitment be a part of a church. Recommit yourself. Accept that salvation. If you need someone to walk you through the plan of salvation, we're ready, willing, and able to do that. We thank the Lord for his faithfulness. We thank him for his goodness. We thank him for that faithful sacrifice that he has made. We praise him for his watching over us, keeping us. If there's any outside of the ark of safety, he's ready, willing, and able. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us here on this 141st church anniversary, 
in preparation that we come together and celebrate on next Sunday morning. We praise you for your faithfulness, your continued goodness. Bless us and keep us, guide us, and protect us. We love you, we praise you, we magnify you, and we adore you. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before the presence of his great glory, exceeding great joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be power, dominion, majesty, and glory, both now, henceforth, and forevermore, and all of the people of God say, amen. Happy 141st church anniversary, Crawfordville. Give him glory and praise in Jesus' name. God be with you.